125cc competitor Chad Reed had had about enough of rookie phenom James Bubba Stewart by the time the series visited the Pacific Northwest last year. However, neither rider held the early lead as number 104 Shea Bentley led the field. A rough start put Stewart back in the pack, and number 10 Larry Ward took advantage of it, taking over first place for Bentley. Bubba worked his way up and looked ready to charge for the front. However, number 132, Billy Leninovich, in his first outdoor ride of the year, battled with the series leader and relegated him back for a while. Stewart eventually claimed the last spot on the podium, but his five-moto win streak came to an end as number 10, Larry Ward, won his first moto of the year. In moto number two, Brandon Jessman grabbed the lead while Bubba came through the pack passing ward. Stewart's three-race win streak was in jeopardy if he could not get by the number 28 of Jessamine. Stewart once again makes it look easy as he goes by and then goes home to the checkers and his sixth win of the season. Well, there you have it, James Stewart winning last year. Right now he sits in second place, but I think, David, if you were a betting man in Vegas, you wouldn't put a whole lot of money on Bubba staying in second for too much longer. Perfect example right there. Brown comes off the jump, throws it a little bit sideways. James comes over the jump right behind him and really throws it sideways. He just does a little bit more than everybody else. A little bit more style, a little bit more body English, a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more motivated. Just whatever you got, he's got just a little bit more. Here it comes. Mike Brown is the current points leader, but James Bubba Stewart has been absolutely dominating, and he makes it look easy there. So Brownie now sits in second, exactly where he was in motor number one, and Brown's gone down. Mike Brown goes down in the corner, kind of in a blind spot right there, but he gets right back up. So Brownie's up and riding one more time, but the separation between him and Stewart now is enormous. Uh, two reasons for that crash, as far as I'm concerned. One is you're in the shadows, like I talked about earlier. It's tough to see the rut. The other is, I don't know what he was thinking in the corner before that when James passed him. James, it looked like he just, at that one particular point, sort of conceded, like, okay, well, I'm not going to get him here, so I'll just take this time to pull a tear off. And then Brown went wide, he still got underneath him. So I think his concentration was messed up, and there goes Josh Woods. Bad news for the KTM Red Bull team. Josh Woods looks like he is done for the afternoon. We'll have to find out what happened there. Meanwhile, out in front, it continues to be James Bubba Stewart. He shot past the points leader, Mike Brown, and for Brown's psyche, that cannot be good. Meanwhile, the rest of the pack now trying to reel in Brownie. No chance of really getting James Bubba Stewart, but they're trying to bring him in as Brandon Jessman makes yet another pass. Gets by, looks like Brandon, or uh, Michael Brandis right there, and uh, we just got a, a shot just before that of Tedesco railing that berm at the bottom of the downhill like Stewart did in the opening lap. And I, now I remember, it was it was uh, Bradshaw that made the most impressive pass right there, just drugged the handlebar. Now look, James like, eh, you know, I'm probably not going to get him here. I'll pull tear off. And Brown just looks over like, go ahead. I mean, he didn't fight for that at all. And you know what? That kid's reeling him in in the points. He cannot afford to do that anymore. And he can hold us at the top of the show. Hey, I got to ride more aggressive. And that certainly wasn't a good example of it. Here's Brandon Jessman working his way through the pack again like he did in the first moto, squaring off Brandis before the big uphill. And Tedesco coming through the whoops here, looks like. Yamaha Troy getting by Brandis as well. So he's moving up through the pack. And Tedesco, you know, he, he has a good moto here and there and hasn't been that consistent, but man, the guy is sure fast. Right now, let's check in with Cameron Steele. Well, we talked about it at Unadilla, and now Brock Seller is moving off the track once again. He said it was just the flu and not the Epstein Bar, but Brock not able to finish moto number two. Tough break for the Yamaha Troy rider. It was that a tough time, Todd, with yeah. consistency. And it looked good in moto number one. Had a great start. It's pretty much been like that for the whole Yamaha Troy team. You know, they, they, they had a good moto here, and then they can't close the deal, but they're getting there. They've got a new manager there to try to help them focus a little bit better on their preparation for the races as well as their fitness. Jeff Montgomery, the nickname Iron, he's over there checking that out and, you know, he's, he's got a lot of talent to work with, but he's definitely got a mess to clean up as well. Speaking of talent, here's Grant Langston. You can tell he is certainly off the rivet as far as his level of riding usually goes. Langston, who has the wrist injury, he injured his surgically repaired wrist earlier in the day and a bit of the flu, too. So Grant Langston is seventh place. This really is going to hurt him if he can't move up for the points. Well, he wasn't that far behind Brown. Brown's going to change that around and put some points on him here. He's still ahead of Ryan Hughes. So the only guy he's losing points to right now, the way it stands, is James Stewart. He's still quite a ways back, but I don't know. I, you know, people are looking at how close he's getting. And... 
Ryan Hughes just goes over it. At first, it looked like it hay bale, but there's another bike on the side. We're going to have to find out who that is, but there is a rider down, and that's who Ryan Hughes just nailed. It looked like he had a hay bale, but then you see a wheel in the corner, and it looks like it might be Mike Brown, because Brownie's nowhere in sight. Well, that's Gosler, I think, going up over the jump. And then all oh, it Michael Byrne goes now. over. Byrne just misses, and Burn. Brown stands up, and look at that. Just cold cocks him. Uh, Brian Hughes had nowhere to go. Brownie was trying to get out of the way, and Hughes just came over that blind hill and just drilled him. That was horrible. That's the same jump where Lampson went down years ago and caused a little bit of a pileup. So look at Mitch Payton just going, can you believe this? We'll come back, sort it all out when we return to Washougal.